I don't manage, I'm afraid. Huh? Sorry. There we are, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First, I would like to thank the chairman for these kind words of uh, welcome, which brings back all my the sins of the past. In fact, uh, I've been here in Cork uh, 35 years ago when the majority of you were not even born. And uh, this city has changed, and this country has changed, and uh, probably uh, the environment has changed. So I'm most grateful to Owen McIntyre of allowing me to address you today. I am to talk uh, about uh, the EU and international environment law as drivers for reform with an interrogation mark, uh, because uh, uh, this is not uh, such a clear statement. Uh, it is not a contribution, ladies and gentlemen, about uh, the Irish discussion on uh, the protection of the environment. I'm a foreigner, and I would not dare uh, interfere uh, with, uh, uh, in this discussion, uh, which is your discussion. Nobody, not from Brussels and not from any international uh, circle, can protect the env Irish environment uh, against or without the will of the Irish people. You should never forget that, and you should uh, also assume that uh, responsibility. Uh, the general problem, uh, I uh, referred already to that, is that uh, the environment has no voice. Uh, if you make a constitutional reform uh, to include or not uh, to include uh, the environment, you cannot ask the eagle or the tiger or the fish or the salmon uh, what they think of uh, the wording. Uh, Roderick, a moment ago, has uh, very uh, persuasively argued uh, that uh, there should be some sort of right to, to an environment to the extent that this is practicable. Uh, what would the eagle think of that? Uh, you see, <clears throat> you do not write into your constitution that uh, there is a right to life to the extent that this is practicable or a, life, a right to health to the extent that this is practicable. Of course, and Roddick had uh, argued on that, uh, all provisions of the Irish Constitution are under this unwritten concept of proportionality, even the right to life. So uh, why should there be some sort of uh, provision uh, protecting the environment uh, to the extent that this is practicable? I'm not a specialist of Irish law, but I know from the United Kingdom law that um, whenever they come to, to Brussels and say, well, let's have a, a clause uh, protecting water or the air or so to the extent that this is practical, that means in practical terms uh, protecting uh, to the extent uh, that it doesn't cost us uh, anything. And uh, this uh, practicality, we have tried in Brussels all the time to, to avoid that because uh, it means uh, you do not, uh, you take away with the second hand what you gave with the first hand. Uh, environment law uh, is, uh, in my opinion, this environmental policy uh, put into uh, rules which are binding on governments, citizens, businesses, and polluters. And from that point of view, uh, I certainly would believe that any constitutional insertion of, of uh, environmental issues should uh, cover both aspects. This was mentioned in the discussion already, that there should be a possibility for citizens to enforce, and there should be at the same time an obligation of the authorities uh, to protect the environment, to assume their responsibility towards the environment. So, <clears throat> oh. no, it's, uh, there we are. Uh, here we are. The Irish government's uh, website uh, contains uh, 22 environmental keywords, and, and uh, 15 of that uh, deal with policy issues. Uh, and all these 15 uh, keywords refer to uh, European Union or international uh, legislation. Uh, I uh, took these things out, whether it is uh, drinking water or whether it's bathing water, whether it's uh, clean air or whether it's habitat protection. 
this means that in principle the Irish uh, government's policy certainly is uh, looking very much to what happens uh, at uh, European Union level or at international level uh, and in order to uh, determine uh, Irish policy orientations uh, I wonder whether Mm, the Irish environment is dependent uh, so much on uh, international or European uh, environmental issues. The uh, EPA in Ireland has uh, six long-term priorities, climate change, clean air, water quality, sustainable use of resources, protecting soil and biodiversity, integration and enforcement. Again, without exception, all linked to, to European Union or international uh, policy and uh, law. And the same you find in uh, the dashboard from uh, the EPA, uh, whether it's water, waste, products, nature, air, industrial emissions, noise, uh, the dashboard uh, indicates to what extent uh, the requirements of uh, European uh, Union legislation have been uh, complied with or not. So. The national environmental uh, approach is to a large extent uh, oriented do we uh, comply with our commitments to our, uh, with regard to our European partners. It's less do we comply with our commitments to the Irish environment. Uh, and I would uh, submit that this is a difference because for a number of reasons uh, the European Union policy and law is not uh, comprehensive and cannot be comprehensive. Uh, we heard just a moment ago about uh, the issues of access uh, to justice in environmental matters, where uh, certainly the European Union legislation is uh, not very uh, uh, complete. Uh, the making uh, of international and European law uh, needs to be mentioned here because uh, it gives a little bit the background to uh, what then the Irish policy and legislation is uh, implementing. Uh, the European uh, environment law and the international law has been progressively politicized. Uh, there is practically a consensus uh, to start, uh, there must be a consensus to start legislation. Uh, not uh, consensus to adopt legislation, but even to start with these issues. The best example is, uh, and we heard again uh, uh, on that uh, moment ago, the question whether we shouldn't have an international uh, Aarhus Convention uh, agreement. That means that there is a, uh, an international right of access to environmental information, a right of uh, participation in environmental decision making and a right of uh, uh, access to uh, courts in environmental matters. Uh, the uh, unholy coalition between the United States and Saudi Arabia prevented uh, this issue being uh, set on the agenda of the United Nations uh, environmental uh, program. And uh, so it is out. There is no way of uh, uh, having, a, for the time being, such an international agreement. Same applies uh, to forest uh, agreement at international level. Uh, and you all are aware of uh, the problems of uh, making a post-Kyoto uh, climate change uh, protocol or agreement or whatsoever. Uh, you need consensus to start work, not to finish it. And uh, if you look around for uh, the readiness of states of going into international uh, environmental uh, binding agreements. Uh, I listed United States, Japan, Canada, Russia, China. Uh, there is not uh, a great readiness uh, for uh, doing such things. So we are uh, in, in a problem. Uh, the big five issues, climate change, loss of biodiversity, the omnipresence of chemicals in our environment, the resource management, and the poverty eradication. Uh, if you look at uh, agreements existing at international level, uh, that is just poor. Uh, it's just poor we have for, for chemicals. We have the Stockholm Convention with 12 uh, products regulated out of 150,000, if you so wish. 
the situation in the, in the European Union is not uh, very different. Earlier this, uh, well, last year, the Commission uh, submitted a proposal for a seventh environmental action program. Please, an action program to provide for actions for the next, uh, well, years until 2020. Uh, this action program does not list one single action. Not one single action. And of course, uh, as we do not have a public opinion in Europe, uh, there is not uh, much uh, discussion about that. Uh, the reason for this uh, absence of uh, proposals for a, an action is that before you uh, make a proposal as a commission, uh, the commission has given itself an internal uh, uh, rule to say there shall be an uh, impact assessment on the economic, social and environmental uh, impacts of uh, the proposal. And this even for a program. That means uh, were the Commission to decide uh, that in, 19, in 2020 or in 2019 it would propose uh, uh, legislation on access to environmental justice then it would have to make already by now, in 2012 or 2013, an impact assessment what this kind of uh, proposal could have on uh, economic and social and environmental aspects. Completely absurd and completely uh, impossible uh, to do, and therefore uh, there are no concrete proposals. Uh, this is uh, standard practice. And this explains why uh, we practically do not have new legislation proposals uh, from Brussels over the last uh, three or four years, because uh, this is the new policy under the present Commission and uh, the present uh, Secretary uh, General. Uh, I listed uh, the uh, situation on the attitude of member states. Member states. Uh, which do not have a uh, national environmental policy uh, are afraid of the supplementary burden uh, which uh, European legislation might bring about and member states with a strong national environmental policy uh, do not see the added value coming from Brussels. So uh, this is uh, quite a problem. Uh, Donna had made uh, the uh, remark uh, earlier this morning that uh, Erst kommt das Fressen und dann die Moral. First comes the economic development and then you uh, consider thinking of the environment. Uh, this is an attitude I'm far from uh, arguing, even implicitly, that this is an argument uh, applying to this country, but this is an argument which applies to a number of uh, EU uh, member states at present. And uh, the financial crisis, uh, certainly, if you look at uh, the impacts of that crisis, uh, hidden by the crisis, are uh, those who are economically and socially poor and those who are environmentally uh, feeble. Uh, that means uh, uh, the richer you are, the less you are normally affected by the economic crisis. Uh, let's be quite clear, uh, it does not work in favor of uh, better environmental uh, protection, uh, this crisis. Uh, let me address a little bit the issue of, of uh, the specificities of uh, international law, but rather uh, short. Mm. International agreements need to be ratified in order to be applicable. Uh, the implementation, the monitoring, enforcement is uh, normally weak, in particular as there is uh, hardly an enforcement uh, body. There is uh, no international court to state definitely uh, what the rights and obligations of uh, countries and of citizens are. And uh, for the discussion of these agreements, whether they work or not, normally the only instrument which is available is the state's reports, and uh, no state uh, reports internationally on failures, omissions, and uh, deficiencies. They always report on success stories. Uh, EU law has uh, the same uh, issue uh, in uh, the point that um, uh, EU law needs uh, to have uh, some sort of agreement before uh, the legislation becomes applicable. 
And uh, the reporting requirements under European law are again uh, mainly based, practically exclusively based on uh, member states' uh, reports. Again, uh, member states report on measures and not on results. Uh, implementation and enforcement uh, is a uh, supplementary asset of the European Union with regard to international situation as the Commission is an enforcement uh, body under the treaties. Uh, the Commission, however, uh, is uh, uh, multifaceted. It uh, has strong economic uh, interests and uh, if you look at the uh, organigram, uh, the structure of the European Commission, you have uh, six to ten uh, departments which uh, deal with uh, the promotion of uh, uh, trade and industry, and uh, you have uh, one uh, department dealing with uh, the environment. Uh, a very important point in uh, our discussion this morning is that uh, the European Union treaties are based on the assumption uh, that there is an autonomous national environmental policy. Uh, that uh, the member states do not just take over European Union uh, policy and legislation, but that they provide for uh, own additional and supplementary uh, measures in order to uh, protect their national environment. This is uh, laid down in Article 193 of the treaty and of, uh, in the principle of subsidiarity. Uh, I mentioned earlier uh, that uh, sometimes one might have doubt whether this is uh, fully complied with in uh, this country. Uh, there is a specificity for European law uh, uh, that uh, is laid down in Article 216 of the treaty. Agreements concluded by the Union are binding on the institutions of the Union and on member states. That means, in practice, let us take the Aarhus Convention. Ireland had not ratified the Aarhus Convention for a number of years, but uh, the European Union had uh, done so in 2005. The provisions of the Aarhus Convention were thus binding on Ireland since 2005, including Irish courts, including Irish administrations, uh, and uh, uh, this uh, is an issue which is uh, specific uh, to lawyers, but uh, uh, lawyers do not always uh, manage to convey these matches uh, to uh, the judges. And I say that with all reservation. I have in my life myself been a judge uh, for quite a number of years. There's a second specific element uh, in European law that uh, where the provisions of a legislation of the European Union are unconditional and uh, sufficiently precise the individual citizen may, make invoke, may invoke them uh, in uh, his favor before the courts. The direct effect, uh, which we also have uh, in international law in a uh, somehow nuanced form, but as there is uh, hardly a court at international law, it uh, has la much less uh, relevance. Uh, so there are possibilities in international and European law to uh, influence uh, national environmental law. Uh, if we look at uh, the past examples, uh, we had uh, some uh, international agreements which were quite uh, successful. The ozone layer protection, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, uh, waste shipment, civil society participation, the Aarhus. At present, uh, the only issue which I am seeing in environmental matters is um, the protection of uh, species, the Nagoya agreement from 2010. It is a protocol under the uh, Biodiversity Convention and uh, the problem now is uh, what is Ireland, uh, what is uh, Germany, what is the European Union doing with this protocol? No enforcement uh, issue uh, at, under the Nagoya protocol itself and so we have nice words in this protocol but we don't yet have it in the statute books of uh, the contracting parties and of the European Union either. European Union law had a number of success stories also. Habitat protection had already been mentioned. Uh, drinking water, waste, air quality. I could mention other issues. Uh, 
uh, for the moment, uh, we rather see uh, the issue of uh, <coughs> products uh, to some extent and uh, of climate change being in uh, the forefront of uh, European uh, legislation. Because industry, and this is pure Marxism, uh, industry needs the bigger market. Uh, not only the national market, but uh, the European and, if possible, also the global market. And uh, uh, so it goes for uh, regulations, for chemicals, for pesticides, for cosmetics, for biocides, uh, for biocides, yes, uh, and so on. Whereas in uh, the other areas of uh, the environment, uh, there is little initiative except for uh, climate change issues which uh, continue to take some uh, element of, of uh, attempts to reform. Uh, the legal innovation from uh, the European Union uh, institutions has largely come uh, to a standstill in uh, the environmental sector as a whole. Uh, the, there are attempts to uh, improve punctually, uh, ship dismantling under the waste shipment regulation is an issue uh, due to international uh, adoption of the uh, Hong Kong Convention, but uh, makes things as far as the law is concerned worse than they were before. In the area of agriculture, uh, it is, uh, has become clear since about 20 years to the European Union institutions that uh, in order to create income for farmers, uh, there must be something uh, to be done for the environment because otherwise uh, there would be uh, less environment and uh, less readiness of the public uh, to pay for uh, the income for farmers, which is uh, quite amazing uh, seeing the mm, uh, strong, uh, the strength of agriculture in all our uh, member states. Uh, for fisheries, there are uh, some, uh, again, some attempts to reform uh, the fisheries under uh, sustainability criteria uh, because otherwise there would be no fish anymore. It's uh, as simple as that. Uh, you can't uh, go on with the present policy because um, overfishing and the, the uh, over size of the European uh, fisheries fleet has uh, uh, threatened uh, fish uh, practically uh, everywhere and we are exporting this problem to third countries. Uh, with regard to forests, uh, this is linked to climate change, so there is some attempt of uh, mm, improving the situation. But uh, if you look at the core environmental issues, uh, whether it is uh, waste or water, whether it's uh, noise or uh, products, uh, there is uh, quite a problem. There is uh, no reform anymore reach genetically modified organisms, pesticides, biocides uh, are due to the industry pressure which needs the uniform standard to uh, make uh, better business. And uh, the, instead of uh, doing these uh, things uh, step by step and point by point, uh, the emphasis in uh, both the European Union and international law turns uh, more into the uh, attempt of uh, assuring a better uh, application of existing rules, uh, which uh, goes hand in hand with the attempt of uh, making legislation less precise. We have uh, sustainability and eradication of uh, poverty as, as uh, vague words. Everybody can agree to that, like we can everybody agree to the Ten Commandments and uh, when it comes to day-to-day -day practice, uh, a Christian country uh, is uh, not any better than a non-Christian country in this regard. Sustainability, favorable conservation status, good ecological quality, the polluter should pay all words from uh, the EU, uh, either treaty or secondary legislation. Uh, it's very difficult to give uh, precise content to these uh, issues and uh, this is uh, deliberate because when you make vague legislation, the better uh, enforcement and better application uh, goes into uh, the void because there is uh, nothing which you can enforce in court 
with regard to sustainability. Never has a court in Europe uh, judged, decided that a specific practice was not sustainable and therefore illegal. Uh, we do not have these kind of things. Never have we yet had uh, any uh, decision uh, that there is uh, an unfavorable conservation status for um, uh, nature habitat and therefore uh, the measure was illegal. Uh, with a good ecological quality, we will uh, come uh, in some years only to uh, these issues. Now, let's turn a little bit about, uh, uh, to, to these issues. Uh, what can one uh, take uh, out of all of that? International and European uh, environment law, uh, for the time being, and that means for the, probably the next uh, five to ten years, is not very strong to uh, be a driver for reform uh, in this country or in any EU member state. Uh, but take uh, the example of uh, environmental education in schools, uh, where there's no international or EU competence for that. So this is a purely Irish measure. Whether the Irish uh, population or government or whoever is responsible for that decides uh, to have environmental education in schools or not is a purely Irish issue. Uh, as a lawyer, I would be uh, ready to say we can make a thousand other pieces of legislation unless we persuade uh, people that it is useful, profitable, economically profitable uh, in the medium and long term for the Irish uh, people, for the Irish uh, economy to preserve the Irish environment, uh, these thousand pieces of legislation will not uh, help very much. So uh, we need uh, to change the minds. Uh, one uh, way, very easy, uh, would be to follow examples of uh, the Scandinavian countries, for example, or for the Netherlands, or for the Austria, uh, to <coughs> provide for education at an early age uh, for, uh, uh, with regard uh, to the environment. Uh, bicycle highways in urban agglomerations. Uh, the European Commission has stated that uh, by 2050 cars uh, should get out of uh, inner cities uh, and uh, with a car lobby there will be no uh, legislation for a foreseeable time uh, to do that. Uh, Copenhagen and London uh, are uh, already taking the lead in these things. If you go to Dutch cities uh, you will find an enormous amount of, of uh, initiatives uh, to promote uh, cycling over uh, cars. Uh, this is a possibility which uh, Ireland could do on its own if uh, it so wished. It would not be driven by uh, policy or legal developments at international level. It is uh, a national uh, reform policy which could uh, go for that if one had the political will for doing that. Industrial wastewater treatment. Uh, European legislation deals with urban wastewater treatment and includes some industries, but by far not all. Uh, Directive 2010-75 uh, asks industries to have uh, best uh, techniques for dealing with waste and wastewater. Of course, uh, Ireland could at any moment decide to have legislation in order to have cleaner waters uh, to require some uh, treatment for industrial wastewater. If it so wishes, it's a political issue, it's not uh, legal issues and there's no driver, driving body at uh, European or international uh, law. The habitat uh, designation. Uh, is the number of these some 425 uh, Irish habitats uh, sufficient? Uh, some of them are very small and uh, you wonder whether this uh, biological uh, uh, complementarity, the corridors uh, and so on are uh, sufficiently taken care of. Uh, member states under the Union are obliged to uh, provide for uh, measures to designate them, to classify them as special areas of conservation. Has this been done for the 425 uh, uh, areas? 
uh, a purely an uh, Irish matter. No international or European uh, body is, is uh, driving for that. Uh, climate change, I will not go into this broad subject, you will be discussing that in more detail. Uh, you see, the European Union provides for 2020 uh, about 13,000 uh, kilograms per person and habitat uh, of CO2 emissions per year. Uh, well, sorry, that, this is the, the Irish number. The EU figure is 8,000. Uh, of course, uh, Ireland, in order to do something for the uh, Irish environment, uh, could uh, provide that uh, Ireland uh, remains uh, at the EU average, but doesn't go ahead. Uh, that's an uh, Irish decision, not just following the European Union, but uh, making an own uh, po uh, policy on the energy consumption. I will not go into detail because that, uh, I'm uh, aware of the time, Chairman. Uh, this last issue, I think uh, Donna again has already mentioned uh, this. Uh, there is a ban of bituminous coal in, in some Irish populations, and it was recently introduced in Wicklow, uh, because the local, the municipal council has asked for that. Why on earth uh, is there not an a nationwide uh, introduction of the ban of bituminous coal? Uh, the emissions from this coal, which go into the uh, air, uh, first uh, have an impact on climate, and second, uh, they come down on earth and, and uh, create pollution and contamination. I, uh, reading this, this legislation, uh, I, I fail to, to understand why, uh, driven by the European uh, Union in the 80s, uh, Ireland uh, started to introduce this kind of uh, measure for some th agglomerations, uh, but uh, not nationwide. Uh, if you ask the tiger, or uh, perhaps it's not such an uh, Irish animal, if you ask uh, the eagle or the salmon, uh, what they think of uh, bituminous coal, uh, they would not be too happy. But, uh, uh, and this is uh, the end of my uh, story, Chairman, uh, what you do with uh, uh, the protection of the environment in uh, Ireland, uh, you are not driven uh, by uh, international or European uh, legislation. Uh, this is part of uh, the protection of the environment. Uh, what I would uh, just say by, by, as a conclusion for mm, your discussion on the Constitution, that is, uh, and, and we have uh, some words in the German Constitution on these issues, uh, do not make it uh, just uh, for, uh, as a word uh, of the Ten Commandments. Uh, in Germany we have the, the constitutional provision that the state shall uh, preserve uh, the natural environment and, and so on. Uh, make it enforceable for citizens. The environment is yours and mine and everybody's. It's not just the environment uh, which needs to be protected by uh, public authorities. It needs to be protected by everybody. And by giving uh, citizens possibilities and rights, you are capable of uh, raising also the concern of the individual Irish citizen for uh, preserving, protecting uh, his or her environment. And that is uh, uh, finally uh, what it's all about. Thank you very much for your attention, ladies and gentlemen.